Let us not forget everything that happens is by the will of the Lord. It's time to unite and say that we will be the best amongst men. It's not time to be extreme or to be unthinkable, but to stand together. Followers streaming every day. Various platforms. Trust me, you'll find a way. Soon, the followers. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Soon, the followers in association with Aris Institute presents intensive foundation in Islamic studies. This will be taught by Dr. Ibrahim Jamali and Dr. Ali Shahada. Courses will start on February 10th and 11th, 2024. That's 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Central. The subjects will be Sciences of the Quran, Fiqh, Usul al-Fiqh, Origins of Jurisprudence, Akita, Islamic Theology, Sira, terminology and sciences of hadith please tune in right here on sunnah followers in alhamdulillah wa salat wa salam Allah wa rasulullah welcome to our akita class for tonight Alhamdulillah, and uh, this has become, um, I was looking at some of the emails uh, that I received before, uh, right before class, and this class, of course, this is the number one class of all the classes that we do teach here at Sunnah Followers, because this is the class of Akita, and that's what it's all about, as I remind everyone every day, if your belief system is not correct, then none of your good deeds will be accepted by Allah. You'll just be a person bankrupt. Nobody likes to be bankrupt in this world. You're going to hate it even more being bankrupt on the day of judgment. So I was looking through some of the emails that I have and uh, mashallah, a lot of positive emails from this about this class. Uh, I was uh, uh, reading one from a sister here named Sarah. Mashallah, the sister Sarah says how uh, she stumbled. She happened to stumble upon this uh, YouTube channel. And uh, she was looking at one of the shorts, the short that I put out the other day about um, how your supplication does not have to be in Arabic. And she said for the first time, uh, her heart has been ignited basically, uh, because she has been Muslim all her life, raised a Muslim, and subhanahu Allah, she's always been told that dua has to be in um, um, Arabic. And of course, she doesn't speak Arabic. She's not from an Arabic background. So she was saying that she never felt um, uh, certain or felt good about making dua. That's why, you know, and she didn't do it much because she didn't know what she was saying when she used the supplications that other people give her. So she was saying how subhanAllah, that video really touched her heart and opened her up. And then she came upon the channel and she happened to listen to my uh, lecture from three days ago. And I checked on our YouTube channel, the lecture I gave on three days ago, on this class, we were talking about things that will that will reignite the fitra. That was the day that I did the lecture. I had over a hundred and something views. Um, things that we can do to uh, get the fitra back burning in our heart. And she said it was like I was speaking to her. It's like Allah had sent her uh, to YouTube just to hear me address that. So again, this is a positive thing. And I want to thank this sister, Sarah, whoever you are, for your kind words. And please keep me 
and my family in your supplications and also keep this website all of us here in your supplications because that's make that her comment makes it all worthwhile because that's all we're looking for the true people of the dawa we're not looking for fame god knows i've been doing this since 1986 if i ain't famous now i never will be subhanallah you know and we definitely ain't doing it for money because ain't no money here i don't have the subscribers nor the followers to get paid a dime okay so we're doing it for the sake of allah you know if we can just touch the fitra of one muslim subhanallah allah we've touched the fitra of a lot so you know that's the whole purpose why i sit here in sickness and in health and teach dawa 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 a lot of people say your whole life is dawa 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 i hope so it's really not but i hope so because if my whole life were dawa 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 then i'll have a lot of baraka when i'm dead inshallah you know so you know this is what we want this is ongoing charity uh for us that'll that we're gonna need when we get through that to get through the questioning of the grave and we're also gonna need it on the day of judgment when all of us have to uh stand on that bridge and be held accountable for the choices we made in life and then we have to cross that bridge too and pray that we got one at least one deed because that's what it takes you got to have at least one good deed to get across that bridge so may Allah bless you sister Sarah and any other Muslims that stumble upon my website you know and I want to remind everybody uh that's just an example of what Allah means when Allah says anyone who is sincere anyone who is sincere in seeking knowledge the true knowledge of islam allah will guide you to the source that's an example of that especially in this day and age in which we are living in the days of the ruwaybida the liars the people that the social media influencers they sit on social media and they speak about islam but the things they say are lies they're not true they'll tell you things that's haram that's not true like you like you can't wear makeup where did Allah say that Allah didn't say that if we can't wear makeup then why come the prophet's wives did would Allah say we can't wear makeup but have the mother of the believers wearing them subhanallah or we can't wear colors or we can't wear prints or we can't be beautiful. These are the days of the liars where they issue fatwa or Islamic verdicts that go against what Allah says. Islamic verdicts that contradict what the prophet and his companions said and did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in this day and age, it's very important for all of us to be sincere, sincere in wanting to learn this religion because if we are sincere and wanting to learn it correctly, Allah will then guide you to the source. But if you're not sincere, he'll let you do what a lot of these brothers and sisters are doing. You will hang around on social media, like we talked about last night, listening to the Muslim social media influencers who use social media as a means of getting rich quick and you will become misguided you will become confused you will become weak and abandoned when i say abandoned i mean abandoned by a law i want y'all to also remember a law tells us whenever we turn away from him whenever we turn away from his clear signs he will attach an extra gen to you. We already have that, uh, that gen that's assigned to us at the age of puberty. Once each and every one of us reach the age of puberty, Allah has assigned a gen to us 
That gin will hoover around into our hearts until we die and he will whisper suggestions that go against what Allah says. We already have him and it's hard enough to defeat him. Imagine Allah giving you an extra one. So now instead of two jinn, I mean, instead of one jinn whispering to you, you got two. And that leaves you with just that one angel. How can that one angel who whispers to the fitra, how can that one angel combat those two jinn in regards to the whispers? Your soul's going to succumb to the two jinn. SubhanAllah. That's why we tell you guys as Daya, never turn away from Allah. Because if you turn away from him, it's hard to come back. It's very, very hard to come back when you got those two shayateen assigned to you. Everybody understand that? For some people, they end up finding their way back after years and years and years of seeking their way. 25, 30 years, right before you die. If you are fortunate, because some people don't find their way back before they die. All right. So I want to thank everybody for those emails. And I want to encourage you to continue. You know, now that your fitra has been reawakened, the jihad, the true jihad begins. Because now that it's awakened, you have to now fight to keep it awake. You have to keep it from going back to sleep. You have to keep it from being diminished. And your shaitan, your shaitan, your jinn is angry. Your Karin, he's angry. He's angry because it's awake. So he's going to work extra hard to try to ex diminish it, extinguish that light. So this is just the beginning. You know, the beginning is easy. The struggle is hard. So. That's why we're speaking about things that we can do to keep that light of fitra alive, awakened, and nourished and well within your heart. And we talked about some things yesterday. What did we speak about yesterday, guys? What, are, what did we talk about yesterday that are things we can do to keep the fitra awake in our heart? Anybody? What are some things we spoke about yesterday that if we do on a regular basis, we can keep, it will keep the fitra alive in our heart. See, I'm going to switch it up with these quizzes so I can get your attention, please. So the people in Zoom, let's hear it. People on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Trovo. What are some things we can do to keep the fitra of our heart alive and awake and nourished? Um, we spoke about reading, reading the Quran and pondering the meaning of the Quran. And we also spoke about being around righteous people, making sure that our environment is correct and upon the way that Allah wanted it to be. MashaAllah. Being consistent in remembering Allah. You guys witnessed that today with Sister Anissa and surrounding yourself with righteous practicing people that keep it open. Subhana Allah, Sister Anissa, she told us that her fitra was reawakened. It was revived. It was never sleep. First of all, let me explain. Uh, 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 Anissa's fitra was never sleep. It was never dormant. And that's what happens to a lot of us. Remember the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said faith goes up and down, up and down. Something good happens, it can go up high. Something bad happens, it can go down. It's like a pot of boiling water. And what is it that fuels your faith? The fitra. So Anissa's fitra was never dormant. Her fitra was never extinguished. Her fitra was never asleep. But what happened is it dimmed down. Just like a candle can be bright, then it goes down, then it goes back up. Her, can, her, her fitra went down a little bit. 
because of the pain she's going through physically. And that happens when we're experiencing health issues. The pain can be so unbearable that it'll cause, you know, our faith to go down a little bit. You know, it was not extinguished, but it's just that she's been dealing with pain all week. So her faith was low. But then yesterday's lecture popped it up. And then today, when Dr. Asim spoke about how the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was tested and felt uh, lonely, felt hopeless, and Allah took him on that journey, that made the light in her heart go whoosh, back high. So she's back now. So let me explain that. Her fitra was never gone. It was just dimmed. It happens to all of us. But then something, we can hear the words of Allah like she heard today, hearing about the prophet who she loved so much, hearing how he struggled, how he was so depressed that he broke down and cried. That made her light of her heart. That candle went whoosh. It became a fireplace. Just like that fireplace here in, this, in my setting. It was, that light was there, but it was a trickle. Now it's a full-blown fireplace because she said, subhanAllah, I ain't no different than him. If the prophet Muhammad, this mighty man could break down and cry like a baby because he felt alone, who the heck am I? So she warmed up and that flame came high. And now, like she said, I'm back. I'm back. So that happens to all of us. This is why it's important to read and ponder the Quran, to learn about the companions. That's why I teach all these Sira classes here. You got me, Brother Mukhtar, Jamali. We're teaching Sira because by hearing about the prophet and how he handled, he was put in situations worse than ours. But looking at how he handled it, look at how you and you will be just like Anissa saying, "Okay, Allah, I'm ready. Bring me more. Bring me more. Bring me more hardship." And that's another hadith. You know, uh, one of the companions he said, "The true believer says, bring it on." Bring it on because he knows that he can handle it and he knows it's a way of burning away all those bad sins. So bring it, bring it, Allah, bring it. SubhanAllah. So very important, guys, to ponder the, the, the words of Allah, ponder the life of the Prophet Muhammad and his companions. And it's very important, like Anissa said, to keep yourself in the company of righteous Muslims. Some of us don't have Muslim families to take care of us when we're sick. That was her dilemma today. She's sick, very sick. And subhanAllah, we want to be around people like us. But we don't have any Muslim family members. We don't have any Muslim neighbors either. But alhamdulillah, Allah did send these, you know, little Christians, you know, the Christians. Who did the prophet? Allah says in the Quran, you know, who's closest to us? The people that's closest to us are the Christians. Okay. So Allah got little Christian people around her who are helping take care of her and helping her meet her needs. But of course, we all long to be with our own because see, with Wala well better, we're only comfortable with our own. So that's why her flame, the flame of her heart flickered because she was longing to be around her own. But hey, I'm, I'm together now. Her thing is I'm ready. I accept it. I ain't alone. I got the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rooting for me. And I want all y'all to remember that. The Prophet Muhammad may do it for us, the later generations. He said good tidings to the stranger. 
That was for us, for those of us who hold on tight to the rope of Islam, never letting it go. For those of us who adhere to the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad with the understanding of the companions, that's important. Not the understanding of the Ruwaybida, but the understanding of the companions. He's rooting for us. He said, glad tidings to you. Don't give up, Anissa. Hang in there. That was his supplication. I'm here. I will be standing across from you when you walk down that Sarat bridge. For those of you who don't know, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we got to walk down that Sarat bridge on the day of judgment, the Prophet Muhammad will be standing across from us. On his left will be the kinship. On his right will be truth. And as we walk down that bridge and have to give away our deeds and take on others' bags, he's standing there rooting, Come on, Anissa, come on, you can make it, you can make it. Anissa, Anissa, the kinship is next to him saying, she honored her mother, even though her mother was a Christian, a Catholic who worshiped Mary, Anissa still was polite to her mother, patient with her and cared for her. The kinship is mentioning all the good things you did for your non-believing Muslim relatives because the kinship, it doesn't matter what religion it is, you got to give the kinship its right. And then on the other side is truth. As you walking down that bridge, Anissa, the prophet saying, come on, you can make it, you can make it. The truth is saying she was there by Layla Nasheba. She defended the people of knowledge. She held true to Islam. She never lied. She never stole. She never adulterated. She honored the trust of Allah. So the truth is mentioning all the good things you did. How oh, y'all don't know this, but this is what's, what it says in the hadith. The truth is counting out all the truthful, honest things you did as you crossed that bridge, giving away your deeds, picking up others, and all that. This is a battle. So I want you guys to think about that. Don't ever allow that gene to make you think you alone. Don't ever allow that gene to take you to that place of loneliness and despair. Your prophet is rooting for all of us. Make it. You can make it. I'm, I'm waiting on you. And then when you cross that bridge, he will hand you a cup. He will hand you a cup of water from his pool called El Qatar. So we got to think about that. We got to think about the ultimate big picture instead of focusing on the adversaries of life. This is where I tell my students all the things you've learned from me over the years, all these hadiths, you got to fall back on them. You got to fall back on them when you start going through these uh, uh, bad thoughts and crap. I do. How do y'all think I can stay the way I am? Single for 30 years? Alone? Nobody to care about me but my cats? I fall back on what I know. I think about my prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, rooting for me. I think about Um Salama, Aisha, and all of them saying, you can make it, Layla. We waiting for you. You are never alone. Y'all understand that? 
Not to mention you got the angels of mercy surrounding you night and day. They come down in shifts, Fajr, Asr, and they're beating their wings as we speak now. They're smiling. They're making do it for you. And when you mention Allah's name and read his words, they put their mouth on your mouth. SubhanAllah. Loneliness, depression, anxiety, anger, jealousy, envy. These are all evil emotions of shaitan. Those are the six major evil emotions that our personal gen spews into your soul to try to get you to transgress, to try to get you to lose hope because he knows, your personal gen knows that if he succeeds in getting you to lose hope, what's going to happen? You're going to take your life. That's why suicide is a sin of disbelief. And that's why Layla Nashiba Ura from the tribe of Sheba Ura will never allow any man, any woman, any gin, any animal to come into my website and make any Muslim think suicide is a forgivable sin. That's what Shaitan and his Aulia want you to believe. When Allah clearly tells you he'll never forgive anyone who takes their own life because you gave in. You gave in to your jinn. You want to get banned from my website? Come in here talking like that around me. You messing with the real dire now. You ain't messing with no social media influencer. You messing with people who will die in the name of Allah. Don't play with the hearts of Muslims. Especially with what's going on in Gaza. Don't play with the Muslims believers heart and cause him or her to lose hope. There's always hope. That's the lesson that Allah taught the prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you innovators on that night journey. There's always hope. And there's always people rooting for you. It's when you lose the hope that you have abandoned me. That's what Allah says. Whenever my servant loses hope in me, he has abandoned me. And when you abandon me, I have no need of you. That's what Allah says. So don't ever fly up in sooner followers trying to debate with Layla Nashiba. I'm female, but I'm more warrior man than you are. Don't play with me and my people. This is Dawa. I'm here to teach, not to argue, not to debate, and not to ever be challenged. Not by no man, no woman, no gin. You got it, people? And I'm serious about that. Muslims today are suffering with weakness. This series is all about how, how to rekindle your faith. The Muslims all over the world, not just Gaza, but, some, but uh, uh, Sudan, Yemen, those other countries, China, America. Oh yeah, we're suffering everywhere. We need to hear and learn how to rekindle our faith. We don't need no shenanigans from the Aulia.
of shaitan trying to take us away from that. It's not tolerated here. You understand that? New dyer on the block. All right. So one of the ways that we can keep that light burning, and that's a good way, guys, is to think about and ponder the words of Allah, to ponder the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and his companions. And what are some more things we can do to keep that faith burning, to keep it awake in our heart? What else? We can do uh, a lot of self-evaluation, uh, removing things in our environment that can lead you to disobeying the law, uh, making your own ibadah with the law, seeking beneficial knowledge, and also being balanced. Mashallah. Y'all hear what he named? Being balanced. Not allowing what's going on in the world around you to pull you too far this way or too far that way. Balance it. Be careful of your environment. That's why I tell y'all, don't be hopping around on these YouTube channels. All you need is one teacher. And if you got one that's teaching you the right way, what you hopping around for? Ain't nobody going to tell you nothing that that person ain't already told you if the person's preaching the truth. If they ain't preaching the truth, all they can do is take you away from what that person had you at in your faith, in your fitra. Be careful of the environment. Be careful of the company you keep. Be careful of the environment you're in. How can you awaken your fitra if you hanging around with people who smoke weed? How can you awaken your fitra if you hanging around with people who don't go, who don't pray? How can you awaken your fitra if you hanging around with people who argue, debate, who have no respect for the true people of knowledge? Those people are the awliya of shaitan. All they're going to do is take you out of here. And shaitan has more allies than Allah does. Allah says that. There'll be more people in hell than paradise. Subhanallah. And also, like he said, we have to be regular. We have to be regular in learning about this religion. You have to, if once you find a faith-filled environment, you have to stay there and, and, and be consistent. How is it that a person like Anissa can deal with all the trials she's got? She's 80 years old. She's been Muslim for a long time. And Allah has tested her with everything from marriage to children, to money, to property, to husbands, to relatives, to mother, father, sister, brother, and now health, death, cancer. She done been through cancer, all that stuff. How is it that she's still here resilient? She's still resolute and resilient because she never ever, ever left her faith-filled environment, which is my classes, my Zoom room. And she's not one of those people like many of you who hop around trying, thinking that somebody else going to teach you what I'm teaching. You ain't getting it nowhere else. Haven't y'all discovered that yet? I've been doing this since 1986. You still can't find nobody to break it down like me in English. When you going to accept that? Ain't no man, ain't no other woman gonna tell this stuff to you the right way like me. Accept it, hang on to that. Then you can be like Anissa. You can be like Izdahar was. Another one of my students who died a few years ago. She was resolute, smiled even on her deathbed. She was ready to meet her maker. She said, Allah, I'm ready. They say her last words were, I'm ready, yes, 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 and she died. And I talked to her right before she died. She wasn't hopping around on the internet. My other student, Brother Bilal, I'll never forget him. He was from Lebanon. Y'all remember Brother Bilal? He had a life threat, he died of a disease. 
He, the last thing he did before he died was he attended my uh, uh, Akita class. Then he got up, made, because he's in different time zone, he made Faja. They said after he prayed those two rakats, he smiled and said, I'm content. And he died right after that. He wasn't hopping around. These are Arabs. Isdahar was Palestinian. Brother Bilal was Lebanese. Okay, Supana Allah, they weren't hopping around like many of you are doing. And y'all come back here every day, the same question. Sister Layla, why come I feel so alone? Sister Layla, why come I, I, I'm depressed? Sister Layla, I got anxiety. Welcome to the real world. Who ain't lonely? Who ain't depressed? Who ain't got anxiety? You better learn to control yourself like the rest of us do. Ain't nobody more anxious than I am, but I got it under control. Maybe if you stop hopping around from YouTube influencer to YouTube influencer, you can pull your mind together. It's all about the people you hang around with and the not telling you nothing that's helping you because you keep coming back to me. I'll get your fitra up, and then when I got it up, you leave. Then you come back again. I'm still lonely. I'm still depressed. You're going to stay that way until you die. And then when you die, them angels going to pull your soul, and they're going to ask you, why didn't you change the condition of yourself? You knew what your weaknesses were. You knew what your problems were. Why didn't you take the steps, sister, to change the condition of yourself? They're gonna ask you that. Why didn't you take the knowledge that you were given and put it into action? Like Anissa, like Izdahar, like Brother Bilal. SubhanAllah, Muslims today just weak. All right, so those are some of the things that we talked about. Once the fitra has been awakened, the jihad or the struggle is to keep it burning, keep it fueled, keep it nourished. And we talked about those things, good company, faith-filled environment, regular remembrance of Allah, doing good deeds, hanging around strong believing Muslims, Staying away from those who call us to paths other than the right path. Well, today we're going to speak about um, and then some examples from the companions. Because again, the best examples for us are those companions. Because there is nobody living on this earth today, not even the people in Gaza, who have been tested and tried more than those companions were. And their faith never diminished. If anything, it grew. And one of the things that helped those companions to keep their fitra strong is they were very careful, careful where they took their knowledge from. They wouldn't hop around from YouTube channel like y'all do. Okay, they didn't do that. They didn't take their knowledge from just anybody, okay? And also they made sure that they stayed in a faith-filled environment, that they stayed around strong believers who could uh, catch them if they find themselves slipping and pulling back like I'm trying to do with you guys now. I'm trying to catch you while you're, you're flipping in your faith and pull you back. So let's put the PowerPoint up. And today we'll be covering pages um, 87 through 89. But I'm doing it backwards. I think I'm going to be beginning with page 89. And then we'll do go back to seven. So let's put the PowerPoint up. Because I just rearranged uh, what Kareem Abouze put. He put the, um, the death first. I'll save the death for later, for last. 
So let me uh, take this down first. Did you guys say the stream is okay, right? The little bitty ticker, that doesn't get in the way of the PowerPoint. Is that what you guys told me yesterday? No, I don't. Okay, good. Okay, I'll leave that up. because I want. Please, guys, donate to support us. This is the 10th of the month. We only have $100 in our account now because the streaming bill came out yesterday. For those of you who donated, may Allah bless you. The $300 for this streaming program came out and also uh, uh, the Wix and also I think it was Canva. So may Allah bless y'all. But we got other bills that's going to be coming out too next week. So we need more donations to cover uh, these expenses. You know, it's $2,000 a month to run this website because my YouTube channel, y'all can do the math, do the stats. I don't have the subscribers like uh, these other brothers do. Their YouTube channels pay for their website because them brothers make $5,000 a month off of YouTube. I don't make that. No. No. Not even close. Not even a third, a fourth. But I'm hoping we could pay the website because we are a nonprofit organization. Unlike some of them brothers, we are nonprofit. You know, we are not no, ain't nobody in here for no money. Uh, any donations go to the website. They don't go for nobody's pocket. I just retired. I worked for the government for 36 years. And Elham duty law, I get a nice retirement check that takes care of me and will take care of me for the rest of my life. And it covers my health care and everything. So the money don't go in my pocket. I don't need nothing. It, it goes in this website and I don't, I just make enough to cover me. I ain't got no extra because I'm high maintenance. Y'all know Layla, Layla's a high maintenance girl. My rent is $2,000 almost. Oh yeah, they went up on my rent. They going up on my rent, Fresno. I'll be paying close to $2,000 a month. So I'm high maintenance. I don't live, I live high and I can afford it. But I can't afford if I got to put it in his website. I ain't, nope. I ain't moving down. Beverly Hill Billies. I ain't going down. <laughs> Go up, not down. All right. So let me put this power. So please support us. I'm going to keep this ticker up here. But let's see. Let me take everything else down. All right. Hold on here. Uh, this one. Oh, I got that one at the top too. Yeah, I put the little, um, yeah, I, I did. Oh, this one too. Let me look at it. Oh, all right. Okay, let's try this now. Let's see if I can screen share this. Oh, full screen. All right, full screen. Y'all know y'all got to talk me through this. Uh, oh, I got to start with Zoom first, right? You guys. Okay. I got you open, put you on here. This is screen share to you. Go back to here. By the way, I'm looking at some other stream programs too. Somebody told me I can get a cheaper streaming program. I'm looking into that. But until then, this is what we got. Yeah, I know this program is expensive, but it's good. I mean, as long as the, if the other programs are good like this, if they're not good like this, then I don't want them. Because I, I don't have no help. This is me for the brother that's texting me now. Yeah, we'll talk after the class. But it's got to do what this one does and more because uh, I don't have nobody helping me stream. I do all this myself. I got six computers in here. Okay, hold on. Am I doing this right? Okay, hold on. Yeah, okay, let's screen share that again. That's the PowerPoint. All right, take it to the beginning. Okay, everybody can see this, inshallah. Can you all see it? Let me move this out. Yeah, we can see it. It's okay, that, that thing is not in the way either. Okay, good. Okay. All right, so, oh, okay, so today we're going to be covering pages 87 and 89 of the book Diluting El Wella Well Better by Sheikh Karim Abu Zaid. A person asked me last week, why come I use my picture and his? That's a question that you guys should never ask. The reason I use Sheikh Karim Abouzeh's picture is you are supposed to know 
who you take your knowledge from. The book was written by Sheikh Karim Abu Zaid. That is his picture. So you know who he is, but you all know who he is because he's all over the place. Okay. He's a traveling man. What can I say? And I use my picture because I am a your teacher and every student is has a right and is supposed to know who their teacher is. You need to know who you're learning from. I always separate the picture so y'all don't think we married. Hello, I ain't married, but yes, he's my brother. The, the Arabic sisters like to tease me. They say that we act like brother and sister. I don't know how they assume that. Maybe because we're both Egyptian. And I guess because our Akita is the same. Yeah, he's my brother. He's my brother, but he's not my husband. That's why I separated. Okay, but that's Sheikh Kareem Abu Zaid. That's his book. And that's yours truly. So you know who's teaching you. All right. And so uh, in this uh, chapter, in this section of this chapter, uh, Sheikh Kareem Abu Zaid speaks about another way to not only ignite your fitra, but also how to keep it nourished, keep it alive. And that is by surrounding yourself with influential leaders, which is what I be telling y'all. You got to be careful to rue be duck. When you find a teacher that is teaching you correctly, you better do like the prophet said and cling to that person. Cling to that person and make do it for that person because when the true people of knowledge die, they take their knowledge with them. When I'm dead and gone, there will be no other Layla Nasheba. Just like when my teachers left, no one replaced them. That's why I hold on to Sheikh Morsi, because when Sheikh Morsi's gone, I ain't got nobody else that's going to come up in here and tell y'all like he told y'all, no, a woman don't do nothing to please her husband. You do it to please a law, because if it ain't for a law, it ain't accepted. Who else is going to tell y'all the truth when he's gone? The knowledge goes with them. So it's all, and this is how the companions maintain their faith. They had influential leaders. Their leaders were each other. For the second generation of Muslims, who did they learn from? The first. The third generation, who did they learn from? The second. They kept the strong around them. And that's what uh, the Sheikh speaks about in these pages here. Let's take a look at it. Okay. In the journey of personal transformation, the role of an influential person can never be underestimated, guys. Inspirational and knowledgeable people, such as the true scholars, the true mentors, they can ignite the inner light of awakening your fitra through their teachings through their guidance. That's why the prophet said, cling to them. Don't be so quick to try to replace them with somebody else. And by the way, guys, this is a gift. Being able to ignite a, or awaken a person's fitra is a gift that comes from a law. Understanding of the religion is a gift. As Allah himself says in the Quran, El Furkan comes from him and he only gives it to a select few. Not everybody that teaches Islam is a scholar. I tell y'all that. In fact, the true scholars, I can count them. I can count them on two hands. Not everybody that teaches Islam is a mentor either. They have to inspire you. As one of the companions said, how can you tell the difference between knowledge that is a benefit and knowledge that is not? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam answered him. He said, beneficial knowledge is what you memorize, apply it to your heart and you act upon it through your limbs. 
That's beneficial knowledge. Beneficial knowledge, the prophet said, is knowledge that's going to cause you to weep over your sins. Beneficial knowledge is knowledge that's going to cause you to want to repent from your sins. Beneficial knowledge is knowledge that's going to hold you accountable, cause you to hold yourself accountable. A lot of y'all listen to these brothers on social media. They argue, they debate. You can't tell me you learning nothing from them. All they're doing is inspiring you to get angry, inspiring you to hate, inspiring you to go to slander each other. If they make you cry, do those brothers make you sit down and look at your sins and weep? That's beneficial. Does it, does, is what they're saying causing you to want to change yourself? to that which is pleasing to Allah, that's beneficial. If it doesn't do that, you're wasting your time. And this is from the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the source, the source, the source, Sahih Muslim. So we have to learn the difference between inspirational and knowledgeable people versus people that are not influential that are, I mean, that are not inspirational, that are not knowledgeable. Because this is how we awaken the heart. And we got an example, again, from the Sunnah, from the companions. The story of Abdullah ibn Maslama al Kanabi. This was a person whose fitra was awakened. It called, he listened to one man, say one hadith to him and that hadith penetrated his soul and went to his heart that it caused him to give up all the sinful actions he was doing and that hadith was delivered by ibn hajjaj and we're going to do his story guy i'm right quick so i'm going to speak about how inspirational knowledgeable people how they, the true inspirational people, the true knowledgeable people, how they can ignite your fitra, okay? And let's take a look at his story. Abdullah ibn Maslama al Kanabi. he was a person that used to drink. He loved to get drunk. The Arabs loved alcohol. They loved to drink and party and get drunk. He became lost in the world of sex and alcohol. And he seemed oblivious to the spiritual path. But let me tell you what happened that altered his whole life. And let's look at it. One day, out of curiosity, Abdullah was sitting outside getting drunk, drinking like he always does. But he saw a bunch of people gathered around a man. So still holding on to his bottle of liquor, he said, hmm, what they standing around listening to him for? The man that they were standing around was Imam Shuba. And this Imam Shuba, El Ibn Hajjaj, he was speaking and he was telling the people about a hadith that he heard from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that hadith was the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if a person has no shame, the person will do whatever they want to do. This one statement changed Abdullah's life. When he heard Ibn Hajjaj make this statement, the words pierced his heart and it triggered the awakening of his fitra. The same way Anissa, Anissa experienced it today. When Dr. Asim made the statement how the prophet Muhammad had went to the people of Taif and how they threw rocks at him and ran him away and how he sat on the mountain crying tears as the blood ran down his head, that awakened Anissa heart. Well, just as that awakened her heart, 
hearing that the prophet said, if a person has no shame, they'll do whatever they want. That's what awakened Abdullah's heart. And after this, he went home and he thought about all the time he spent drinking, all the time he spent with the prostitutes, all the years he wasted in play, in sex, in alcohol. And he developed a new determination. He decided, I got to change. I can't keep living like this. He said, I need to learn about my religion. I have to take the dean more seriously. So that's when he decided to go out and seek knowledge of the religion. So he gave up drinking. He gave up the prostitutes and he began a life of wanting to learn. Does that sound familiar? Many of you have been there. So guided by the people and knowledge, Abdullah set out to study. And who did he study from? Imam Malik. And who was Imam Malik? He was one of the, the uh, well-renowned early scholars. By the way, he became the governor, the governor of Medina too. So he was a well-known scholar of wisdom. The, the other people told him, go learn from Imam Malik. Imam Malik, for those of you who don't know, guess who he studied under? He learned is his religion from the students of Aisha, radiallahu anha. One of his teachers was uh, one of Aisha, radiallahu anha, students named Asma. So Imam Malik learned from the students of the original companions. Abdullah went to learn from him and he was so attracted to the knowledge that he decided, I want to be like Imam Malik. I want to be a person who has memorized the Hadith. I want to be Muhadith. That's what we call it. A person that knows the Hadith. A person that transmits the Hadith is a Muhadith. Okay. Abdullah became dedicated to that. And he was so dedicated that he influenced the imams that came after Imam Malik, such as Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim gained uh, uh, some of their hadiths from Abdullah. So that shows the power of just one simple hadith. Abdullah ibn Maslam's awakening is a testament that any of us can change. Anyone who really wants to change the condition of themselves can. That's why I tell you women and you men who hop around from YouTube channel to YouTube channel to YouTube channel and you come back complaining about the same thing. I'm lonely. I'm anxious. I'm this. You should have changed. You got to change the condition of yourself and then Allah will help you with the rest. Abdullah is an example of that. He was determined to change and he made the steps to do so. And look at him. His story is a reminder that even the most straightforward teachings when delivered with sincerity can ignite the light of the fitra within you. But so many of you Muslims today, you many of you are so far gone, your hearts have become hardened. You're so far gone that listening to a, a lecture even as strong as mine can't ignite it. SubhanAllah. So as people, who should read the Quran and Hadith on a regular basis. I want you guys to know that Abdullah el Kanabi is an example because he didn't just let his fitra wake up and then walk away. No, he spent the rest of his life learning what else did the prophet say? What else did he say? What else did he say? And how to apply it and better himself. 
He didn't do like many of you do. Listen to a good lecture and then it opens you up. The next thing you know, you're back with your uh, YouTube hopping and back to drinking, back to smoking, back to losing hope and all of that. It has to be consistent. Again, Allah says anyone who is sincere in wanting to change himself, Allah will help you in that. Anyone who is sincere and seeking the true knowledge of Islam, Allah will guide you to that too. But the, th the thing is sincerity. Abdullah had that sincerity of faith like those companions, original companions had, which many of you lack. But again, for those people whose fitra has been deadened, sometimes it takes death, as we talked about yesterday, near death experiences to awaken their fitra. Whenever a person goes through a near death experience, that's when they begin to realize that nothing in this world is forever. And that near death experience becomes a wake up call that will cause them to again reflect on what their purpose is, turn back to Allah, repent and try to change themselves. So even for the person whose heart is dead, you can still come back to Allah because a near death experience Will, uh, will cause you to put your priorities in order, will cause you to get your values uh, in the order that they should be in. But you don't want to be a person like that, guys, who it takes almost dying. You don't want to be that, that way. You want to be like um, uh, Abdullah. I want you guys to ponder this hadith. And this hadith is the hadith of Musab ibn Saud. He tells us that his father told him on the day of the conquest of Mecca, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forgave all the Quraysh except for four men and two women. He said, for these men and women, kill them, even if you see them clinging onto the, the cover of the Kaaba. One of those men were, was Ikrima, and my cousin Mukhtar talked about him. Ikrima was the son of Abu Jahal, okay? Ikrima, who was an enemy to Islam, he ran away from Mecca when he heard that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his army was coming, and he traveled by sea. And the boat that he was in became caught up in a storm. And the crew of the ship said, turn to Allah because your false gods will not save you from what this sea will give you. And Ikrima said, by Allah, if nothing came to save me at sea except Allah, then nothing else will save me on land. So, oh Allah, I promise that if you save me from this predicament, I will go back to Muhammad and I will put my hand in his and I will pledge my allegiance to him. And I am sure, Allah, that I will find him forgiving. And so what happened was Allah stopped the boat from tip siding and Ikrima went back to Mecca and he converted to Islam. So the story of Ikrima is an example, is an example, is an example, guys, that no matter how bad a person could have been in this world, or no matter what bad things a person has done in this world, if you are sincere in wanting to change the condition of yourself, if you are sincere in wanting to better your relationship with Allah, Allah will accept it. Allah will accept that, guys. So, again, this hadith mentions the impact of a near-death experience on some people's spiritual awakening. Again, because Ikrima was almost at the verge of dying, but he was sincere. 
And because of his sincerity, Allah forgave him. And our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him amnesty too. And just so you guys know, Ikrima became a great warrior of Islam, just like Abu Sufyan. Just like Abu Sufyan, Ikrima became one of the great warriors of Islam. And he's also one of the companions. He'll also be with those 70,000 that enter paradise without being held accountable. So don't say nothing bad about Ikrama. Okay. But again, you don't want to be the person who it takes almost death for you to see the light. You want to be the person like Abdullah who sees the light before it gets to that point. All right, so I'm gonna stop right here for today. Again, very, very powerful uh, reality. Influential people. It's very, very important, guys, for us as Muslims to make sure that in order to keep our fitra strong, to keep our fitra nourished, that we hang around with good people, good Muslim strong practicing people, influential teachers, influential mentors. You got to stop allowing your gene. Let me use myself as an example. What's the, the number one complaint I hear about me? Oh, she, why does she yell and scream? First of all, I don't yell and scream. This is the way I speak. I speak loudly. Why do I speak loudly? Because my Lord commands it. Allah says in the Quran, in the interpretation of the meaning, oh, you women who believe, do not make your voices soft and low publicly. When you speak publicly, make your voices loud because you never know what evil lurks in the heart of man. You guys heard some women today. You see how soft and sweet those voices are? Not all of them, one of them. That's haram. That's haram. That's haram. Oh no, you will never ever see Layla Nasheba on this internet speaking in a soft, a uh, sweet, beautiful, gentle voice, because that's not the way believing women speak publicly. Number two, like Allah says in the Quran, perhaps you hate something that Allah brings good about from. You let your jinn tell you her voice I am a trained communication specialist. Hello, that's what my degree is in, along with uh, ancient history. To be a dia, you have to know how to move your voice to wake up the fitra in your heart. I do it on purpose. How can I move and wake up your fitra if I was sitting here speaking like those other women? Those other women y'all say do nothing for you. That's because they don't know how to speak publicly. I am a public speaker trained in how to move my voice up and down to wake you up, to shake you. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Muad, you have to know how to shake the heart, Muad. If you're going to be a caller to Allah, you're going to be a daya. You have to know how to shake their heart. I'm shaking your heart. Dr. Dramali shakes your heart. Kareem Abu Zaid shakes your heart. All of us shake your heart. You saying because I'm a woman, I'm supposed to be different? Just like we women don't pray differently than a man. When it comes to dawah, we ain't different either. I have to shake your heart the same way Kareem Abu Zaid has to. And I think I shake it better because I got better command of the English language and I'm trained. All right. So perhaps you hate something, as Allah says, 
that Allah loves and brings good about from. Stop being so critical. Stop allowing the jinn assigned to your heart to extinguish your fitra and instead listen to what I say. Learn and ponder and let your fitra burn bright so you can get across that Sarat bridge so you can have the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rooting you to come on with truth on the right and the kinship on the left. All right, I'm gonna stop right here. Supana kala huma wa bihamdika, a shadow on la ila haila anta, a stock the ruka wa tu boy lake. And yes, Sister Wafaz says she's also Egyptian. Egyptians are known to be very poetic. <laughs> Wafaz. <laughs> Y'all can see what Faz Egyptian too. <laughs> yeah. Arabs are all Arabs are known for being poetic. Good speakers. Yeah. Any questions or comments? I yeah. have a, a, yeah, just ahead. a comment. And um, I basically can witness to everything that you said in this book for real because um, the things that waking you up, I'm basically just a, a super long story and testimony and 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 everything that's being said. So I just wanted to say, SubhanAllah, thank you for uh, teaching me, my teacher. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah, guy. That's what it's about. We got to wake you up. If y'all looking for somebody to make you laugh and all that, go listen to those social media influencers. I, I'm a diet. I'm a teacher. I ain't no media influencer. I'm a Islam influencer. We got time for that crap. You want to hear some women, you know, with uh, with uh, accents, uh, 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 sweet talk you? Go somewhere else. I'm here to, to appeal to your heart and your soul, not your uh, emotions. I want your heart and soul. I don't want your emotions. Muslims today are too emotional. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to yeah. say, oh, okay. I want to say that I'm happy and very glad that you guys have a live person where you can actually see the knowledge that they have, which is me, the faith that I have, which is me, and my determination to live on this earth to worship and know nothing other than our law and our promise in Islam. Salam. 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 And also, to thank our teacher who Allah has blessed. And it, it's hurtful to hear you guys come in and talk about her voice. Her voice is just like mine. And I'm talking my natural voice right now and as loud as it can be. That's me. That's what Allah has me to do. MashaAllah. Yeah, so we wake up people, yeah. wake up people. Because you don't have very long on this earth. 80 years have gone by like a flash of lightning to me. And I had no idea that I would be texted by law at this age where I should be able to walk with a cane and not be concerned about having toe removed and possibility of another toe to be removed. And other things is happening because I'm confined to a chair for months at a time. It's not healthy. It's not good. And most of all, having someone to take care of you, to wipe your behind when it needs to be wiped, because sometimes that happens. And you may have to use somebody to do it that you don't know. MashaAllah. Wake up, people. Thank Allah for what you have. And ask Allah to help you to pass your tests when they come. SubhanAllah. Thank you, Layla. Thanks, Alhamdulillah, Sister Nisa. And remember, like she said, guys, the heart awakens too. The first thing too is also counting the blessings. How many of us look at the good things? We get so caught up. Sister Layla, I'm lonely. Sister Layla, I'm depressed. Of what? You got your all your toes, don't you? You got a foot, don't you? You can stand up and walk to the bathroom. You don't need nobody to wheel you to the toilet. You can take a shower whenever you want. 
So what are you depressed about when we got people that can't do that for themselves? We got Muslims right here that can't do that. We need to look at the blessings of Allah and stop focusing on the pity story. Me, me, me. That pity. That pity. There's always someone worse off than you. That's why the prophet said, look to those beneath you. When you find yourself feeling sorry for yourself, Allah hates that. When you feeling sorry for yourself and thinking that you there's nobody but you, go to a cancer ward, go to a hospital and visit the cancer ward. Go to a children's hospital. See if that'll take you out of that self-pity. Go to a homeless shelter. Look at all the women there with their children to know where to live. You're going to still feel sorry for yourself? We got to stop looking at all the bad in our lives and be more thankful for the good that we have. I do it all the time because I can get lonely. I'm a woman and I'm by myself. I don't have nobody on this earth. Nobody on this earth, I repeat, I don't have a living person on this earth who helps me financially or any other way. So Shaitan will come whisper to me too. But I'll say, uh uh, no, I'm better off than this person. I'm better off than that person. You got to not allow your gin to take you there, sisters. And this crap about a man, we ain't even got to talk about that. Y'all know how I feel about that. You better love yourself. Love yourself. Go listen to Bieber. Take care of your business. Love yourself and know that your man waiting for you up there. Hello. You got a bunch of prophets and a bunch of companions waiting on you. You can take your pick. It can be Solomon. It can be David. It can be the prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It can be Abu Bakr. It could be Khalid bin Walid. It could be Umar. You got a whole menu waiting for you up there. So what you depressed about here? All a man going to give you, what is it? 99 problems and a man ain't one. I can say that. I got 99 problems and a man ain't one. So y'all better look at the blessings, the good things in your life. Instead of crying because you ain't got a man and you lonely, you by yourself. You ain't never by yourself. SubhanAllah. You by yourself because you put yourself alone. You make yourself alone. We oppress ourselves. SubhanAllah. All right. Any other questions or comments? By the way, guys, let me remind you. Tonight at 9 p.m., Dr. Dramali, um, let me talk about this. I meant to talk about this. Hold on here. Let me, yeah, let me talk about it. Hold on for a second. Let me do this too. Before I, uh, yeah, I, I meant to, I'm sorry. I meant to, hold on. Let me put it. Where is it at? Do I have it here? Hold on. We got two other classes today. And we put them today because it's Saturday. The kids can stay up too. At 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Dr. Ibrahim Dramali is going to do something that we don't do enough of. Dream interpretation. Hold on, let me show it to y'all. This here. Okay. Y'all saw that? Let me put it in the background. Um, uh, one of the brothers here on Twitch, I think it might have been Brother Musa. Was it you, Musa? It might have been little Musa here. One of the brothers on uh, Twitch asked me about dream interpretation. And yes, the prophet Muhammad talks about that. Yes, uh, dream interpretation is, you know, there are some people, let me uh, close this up so y'all can see. Can they see it there? Oh, but you know what? Uh, yeah, hold on for a second. <laughs> I want to show y'all this. Wait a minute, hold on. 
I put the wrong one up. Where's the other one? Y'all know what? Just give me a break. I try to work these programs, and y'all know I got issues. Layla got issues. Where's the D? D A B C D. Here it is. I have to go. <laughs> a B C D. Okay, here it is. Yeah, this is it, brother. Um. I think it was Musa asked me about dream interpretation. Can people interpret dreams? The answer is yes. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that dream interpretation is a gift that comes from Allah. And Allah does give that ability to some people, but only a few. As you guys know, all the prophets, all the prophets of Allah uh, uh, were able to interpret dreams. In this day and age, there are some people of knowledge who can interpret dreams too. One person is Dr. Ibrahim Dramali. This is something, a gift that Allah has given to him. And I think the same gift was given to his father. And I think his grandfather and his grandfather, he inherited. So tonight at 9 p.m., Dr. Dramali is going to join and he's going to do dream interpretation for you guys. So if you guys have a dream that you would like Dr. Dramali to interpret, come here at nine and he's going to, inshallah, try to do it for you. Okay. Everybody understand? Yes, nine o'clock. For those of you on YouTube and Facebook and Twitch, Trovo, the same thing. Y'all can come in and type whatever your dream is or join the Zoom room and tell Dr. Dramali your dream and he will, inshallah, try to interpret it because he said he has this gift. Okay? Is this replacing the Articles of Belief class? No, I'm getting ready to get to that. So y'all got that? That's at 9. And then at 10 o'clock tonight, we got my class where I will continue discussion on belief in the law. We'll talk about, continue more about the belief in the angels. So we got those two classes. Dream Interpretation with Dr. Jamali at 9 and my Akita class at uh, 10. Everybody got it? Yeah, try it. I mean, you can see. Exactly. Yeah, try to come in here and see if he can interpret your dream. He's got a few of his students. He's got some of his students who he's interpreting their dreams. And he said while he's doing theirs, he'll do some of yours too. So just, you know, come in and see what happens. Nine o'clock. Okay. All right. So inshallah, I'm going to close out for right now because that's at nine. That's one hour. So that gives me an hour to eat something. I haven't even eaten yet. I want a coffee. I need a Starbucks. Let me go get another Starbucks. Okay. So inshallah, we're going to log back in at nine. Supana kala huma wa bihamdika. Please spread this to your friends. Nine o'clock dream interpretation. Dr. Dramali will try to interpret your dreams. All right. So I'll be back 